Uh, on the set, uh, though. I'll since we had some new newcomers during the video, I'd like to s repeat the basic our main goals. Obviously, number one is de-escalating the situations is key. Number one goal is to make sure nobody gets hurt in any way, and we think that showing this movie and having people informed helps protect not only citizens but police. We think this is a valuable public service for everybody. Secondly, what we have here isn't necessarily going to keep you from being arrested. There are assholes out there who will do what they're going to do no matter what. And as I said before, being arrested will ruin your day, your week, your month, but being convicted will ruin your life. And what we're doing here is setting up layers of defense that you can utilize to apparently shut me up. Okay, <laughs> to get me closer. Uh, and uh, to, so your lawyer can f figure out various ways to reduce the chance of you being convicted. Uh, so my name is Andrew Greenberg. I'm better known as a game developer. I run the Georgia Game Developers Association. If any of you want to make games in Georgia, talk to me. We've got big events coming up soon. But I also work with a few governmental entities, and we've been, I've been doing this and versions of this for about 15 years and at least 12 years here at Dragon Con with a great panel of people over the years. So to my left. I, I'm Cara Chapel. Can, do you hear me? Uh, I've been working with Andrew for about a good portion of those 12 years, first on a busted panel, and then we changed to this track. And so uh, my background is I am a personal injury paralegal, but also a paralegal and have some <coughs> education in law and how you can defend yourself. And my father was a homicide detective, and I got a lot of in <laughs> information from that. So I'm here for there. Hi, I'm J.P. Berry. I am a retired state trooper from Maryland. I recently took a job with a federal police agency, which I don't want to mention who they <laughs> are because I don't represent them when I'm here. And yes, he busts little old ladies for fun. Give it up for the man who arrests the little old lady. <laughs> He's you want my mic? Typecast. <laughs> typecast is an asshole. You see, I just do that professionally. All right, so we are going to go ahead and open this up to questions. We usually find that to be an important thing. While she's going around for questions, I'll touch on a few things that our previous video showed that this doesn't touch on. Um, a couple of things, especially with uh, car encounters. One thing that we've had recommended, if you're worried about this, and the police pull you over, they ask for ID, roll down your window only a small amount. You don't have to roll it down more than what you need to pass your ID through. That way, the chance that being able to say they smell something as a justification for a search is reduced, and it's easier for your lawyer to throw things out as a result. Uh, we, I've worked with a couple of very good lawyers here in uh, Georgia, Winston Getz and David Clark, who have told me that when their clients refuse searches, they have gotten... Uh, 100, they have a 100% success rate in keeping them from convictions on driving under the influence of marijuana. So just refusing the search, they've been able to suppress the evidence that's caused the issues and gotten their clients out repeatedly. The other thing they don't show in here that the previous video did that I've heard great things about is if the police do order you out of your car, you obviously don't resist, but you do lock the car behind you. It's kind of hard with this key set that I've got now is just a key fob, so I'd have to go into my pocket, pull it out, and that's probably the stupidest thing to do during a police stop. But if the keys are out ahead of time, I can hit it and lock it as I go out of the car, and that gives you another barrier for them getting into the car. Because even if you say no, there's every chance they might still go in and search illegally. All right, so I see we have questions. Yeah, uh, uh, I have a quick question about uh, two two viral video instances that have come out recently. Uh, the first uh, with, with sort of uh, the Utah nurse who got arrested and, uh, uh, you know, she was protecting somebody, uh, uh, one of her clients from getting her bl their, their blood drawn while they were unconscious. She was arrested and then later released where she kind of broke a lot of those rules, whereas someone like Philandro Castile uh, obeyed a lot, I think, every one of those rules but was still shot and the, and the, the officer was still released. Yeah, again, uh, one of the issues here is an asshole can be an asshole no matter what the law. And uh, we this is to minimize it, and really stupid shit still unfortunately does happen. Uh, I'm not aware of the uh, Utah nurse video, unfortunately. And, I mean, people will say a lot of this is situational. If you're in a hurry to get home, you might abide by anything the cop says just to end the situation as quickly as you can. 
On the other hand, what they showed you is you don't know what people have left in your car. I just had this conversation right before I came here. A friend of mine said, I'd let them search my car. So you've got teenage kids, and you give their friends rides in your car. You have no idea what's back there anymore unless you've checked regularly. So you don't know where you're going to hit that situation. My business partners, he, uh, my first game was a game called Vampire of the Masquerade. We hired him to do the werewolf line. He's driving from Virginia to join us. Had just bought a car, used car. Comes to Roadblock, has no idea what's in that car. And is realizing it at that point. So all of this is situational. Uh, what do you do uh, in certain situations? This could be the wrong thing. But this is what will give you the best protection if it comes down to that. I'm aware of the Utah nurse situation. Um, I will say that she was well within policy doing what she was doing. That was protection of the, of the patient. Um, the defenses that I've heard from the officer actually don't apply anymore. Uh, and what I mean by that, well, because um, exigent, you can almost make a good is the exigent circumstance that he used as a as an argument that almost comes into play. However, whenever you come into a medical facility like that, your blood will be drawn anyway to make sure that they don't give you something that's going to automatically kill you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, that isn't going to automatically kill you. So it, at the very least, they could um, subpoena that uh, information or get a warrant for that later to get that patient's records. Um, so that's why, to me, the exigent circumstances probably did not apply in there. Uh, when it comes to um, uh, implied consent, that is shaky ground mainly because implied consent goes to um, the direct, uh, direct medical attention in order to save someone's life, not for evidentiary purposes. Right. All right, so uh, I will say that she was well within her policy, and she did the right thing there. Um, she was later released. She's got a, certainly got a great tort, if you guys know what that is, up against that police agency over it. And, um, you know, the, the, I was just having this discussion with a friend earlier. Sometimes some people get into the wrong jobs. <laughs> Anybody us, any of us who work a job, we all know that dipshit, or two, or five, or however many case. And the problem is, especially with jobs that are unionized, and especially jobs that require these uh, these um, uh, background checks, uh, long, long background checks. Uh, it, it, honestly, they're harder to get rid of, but they also have to do something wrong first. I can be working with someone right next to them and know that they are a horrible person, but I cannot get them out. I cannot have them removed until they actually do something wrong. Otherwise, just because I know they're a POS, <laughs> I can't just say, nope, we got to get rid of them. Because how is that any different from my turning to you or you or you and saying, oh, nope, get out of here, you're gone, you know, for no other reason other than I think you're a POS. You know what I mean? So there has to be an actual reason, actual evidence, and actual case built up against these people in order to remove them from service. So I'm, I'm going to run with implied consent for a minute, just to take it a bit off track from what you're discussing, because this is a regular question we get here, and that's the whole, uh, what happens when I'm pulled over on a DUI, and they ask for my ID, and then they want me to take a drug test. The uh, the doctrine of implied consent, as practiced in Georgia, means that in driving, I am implicitly giving the government consent to check me to see if I'm drunk while I'm driving. And if I refuse to give that consent, if I don't want to do the breathalyzer, don't want to do the others, then my license can be removed for a year. So that's your decision if you want to refuse that search at that point and lose your license for a year or proceed with the, uh, proceed with the search. But you've said that as because you're driving, you've implicitly stated they can search. And I think we checked this out a couple of years ago when we were working on this, and I think the majority of the states do believe or have the uh, complied in sense. Yeah, con excuse me. Uh, in She's place. In we don't know what's in this. We don't know what's in this. Next question. 
Um, yeah, there, there's always a little place on your car by the. You have to hold that up. We can't no, hear you. Th there's always a place on your car where you can push it to make it lock it without reaching into your pocket. By the way, with the, all these fobs, um, the generally. Except. But I want to hear from him. Are there any interesting or funny tales you have about that filming of that video? <laughs> Has there anything you can think of? Um. Cause it, it, the the comedy in it is very. I, I <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, honestly, the only thing that I uh, they asked me, everything else, everything was scripted. I had to stick with the script, and it, and it's like, oh. Well, but that's maybe, a great search you do. You, know. you do the very detailed, <laughs> without turning the place up. You're going through everything. I was trained by the best. <laughs> <laughs> and he, yeah, he went through a bunch. It goes through all through the books. A lot of stuff, you know, but, but uh, I mean, get me. The, the They're not going to have me do it, the, the whole search of the house. You know, what he didn't tell them during the scripting was that he really does hate old ladies. And uh, <laughs> Darn baking cookies and stuff. <laughs> okay, so um, in regards to recording uh, police, um, you know, as a witness, what are your thoughts or rules in regards to if they try to shoo you away, if, how far do you have to be, you know, body cams and such, you know, there's, I don't remember the state, but I know that now there are certain states that has legislature to, like, kind of hold body cams to the public. You have to go through certain channels now to prevent them getting released to the public. What are your thoughts uh, about that? So whether you're recording them or not, if a cop gives you an order, Usually, you need to go ahead and follow that, or then you start risking uh, the resisting arrest charge. Now, they can't make you stop filming, but if they say, back up, you're in our way, you're really going to have to uh, comply with that one, or you are facing arrest yourself. Uh, now, if they start pushing you well beyond where you can see and well beyond where they need you for their safety or for whatever's going on at the crime zone, that's a whole other issue, and that's one that's still being dealt with, and obviously the law has been clearly defined that you have that right to film them, that uh, they cannot stop you from filming it. It's, they can certainly try and make it very difficult for you to do, but you have the full right to record. As to the releasability of those videos uh, from a foyable aspect, it would depend on whether or not you are in the middle of a criminal investigation or not. And uh, I think certain states have certain requirements on what they will and will not allow and who the requester is. The nearest one? Yeah. No, I, I'm going to tell you this that, um, you know. Whenever we have to turn over video that's in our um, vehicles or on our body cams or anything like that, we have to go through something called a chain of custody, an evidentiary chain of custody. Here's the problem whenever somebody you know, takes their phone out and starts recording it, all right? After our, they're done recording it, who sees it, who's, who's it given to? It's like if I go ahead and I record something with this phone here for you guys, all right, and I was like, hey, I want to show you. Here, look at my phone. All right, suddenly that's out of my custody. That's in her custody. What has she done with it? All right, and then it goes on to the here's, next person. Here's what I can do with person, this, though. You know? Um, if he's in law enforcement, and if he's a public official, and if he's recorded something, correct? On my body cam, yeah. It's or, or so it's a, then it's a foyable object. Mm -hmm. So anyone can no, make what it. I, no, what I'm, what I'm saying is that if you as a citizen do that, there, be, there becomes an evidentiary chain of custody problem. And whenever you just you know, go ahead and release that to the media, nobody asks you at the media, hey, so how many other people have touched this phone you know, or this evidence before getting to us? They don't ask you that question. They just ask you, where did you get it? Did you do it yourself? That's really all they ask you. They don't say, well, you know, has anyone else done it? Because the reason why we have something called an evidentiary chain of custody is to show that nobody tampered with it. All right? Well, one of the things that's being used to get around that is that uh, there are apps out there now that will immediately upload it and put it basically in an escrow account where the people who are holding it will be 
in a very secure position of saying they haven't messed with it mm-hmm. and they've got it then. So if this is something that you are concerned about and you feel you're in situations where this can happen, it is worth grabbing those apps and having them on your phone. Yeah, and I think there are a couple others, but that's the main one. ACLU Hello. has one. Yep. Yeah. Just working. All right. Uh, yeah, another question kind of about cell phones. Uh, I heard somewhere recently that uh, though a cop, you know, like say in the in the course of, you know, like hey, they pulled you over, they've taken you out of your car, and you've you've resisted the, you know, you haven't consented to the search, but say that when going through your pockets, they take your phone out. I've heard that they can actually just take your thumb and put it right on your phone and unlock it, and then say flip through your camera and see some maybe photos you took when you were in Colorado where it's perfectly legal, and then they use that as evidence to take you in right there. C- can they do that? Is that like a thing now? So this is a bizarre bit of legal uh, reasoning, wherein a password and passcode and the um, patterns are protected, but biometrics aren't. Your body is not considered something that you have, that you can lock away. Your body's out there anyway. So yeah, if you've got a thumb code, they can access the phone, and you don't want to be fighting a cop at that point. So, and then they're in, and then your lawyer will try and throw it out later, but they're not in as good a position as if you have, uh, as if you have a passcode or numbers, whatever. And if you have a pattern, clean your phone regularly because your greasy fingers is all over that thing. Does that answer the, the question? can mess up on purpose. Quick question about the legality of Roblox, because I'm sure that hopefully would apply to everybody that's here tonight. Um, at least for the state of Georgia, I've heard that there's um, some issues with certain counties. Um, they're supposed to at least uh, broadcast or, or publish if they have a roadblock that's supposed to be listed um, in a particular area, although you know, they may skirt the lines outside of, like say, events like um, Dragon Con or you know, just something where it's going to be a lot of people partying. Um, is there is there any kind of way to vote for, for like actual any kind of self protection as for maybe getting entangled into something that may you know loosely be legal? Ways uh, I'm not aware of anywhere where they have to uh, announce a roadblock ahead well, of time. I, I know for a fact in in, Cal- in um, Clayton County they're supposed to. And they usually put it inside like a little you know local newspaper, but they usually go pretty far and beyond. Um, I mean, usually they're trying to, tra- trying to catch drug dealers, but they'll catch literally anybody well, that they that can. That is definitely, definitely news to me. But uh, the, the basic doctrine behind, uh, implied, uh, behind Roblox is, again, the implied consent. You've got to have your ID. You've given consent to that. Um, so that is, again, what's going on. And this is where all that safety about your car becomes critical. You don't consent to any searches. If you have anything that might be a problem, it goes in your trunk. If you're into kink and you have a play bag, then what the cop would consider your rape kit goes in your trunk and never in the front of the car. If it's weapons, uh, people often talk about what's within your reach is what the cops are most worried about. But really, anything you're concerned about is in your trunk, not in the body of your car. Uh, just kind of a follow-up to an earlier question regarding videotaping uh, police officers and everything. Videotaping? Well, no, videotaping. Like your camera, <laughs> your cam, using your using your cell phone, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're showing our age, man. I know, but it, <laughs> I know. Anyways, so uh, I know there is uh, different states have different uh, standards for this in regards to videotaping police officers. How close is considered to be, what the distance, say, distance of not involving yourself in a police you know, doing their work and everything. Do you know what that distance is in the state of Georgia, generally? How far, what's considered a savings? Or basically, could a police officer say, I need my space, I, you need to back up, and he literally walks them off around the corner three blocks down and says, that's far enough, you're good there, bye, and goes back while well, they're doing whatever they're doing to this other person. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this. In the edged weapons video that we are taught in the academy and even in, in practicum, all right, we like to talk about something called the 21-foot rule. It's an old rule, really old rule, because actually it's more like 28 to 30 feet. And the idea is that you know, someone within that space, even if I am fully aware that they're attacking me with an edge weapon or a blunt weapon that, will, that you know, can still kill me, hammer, knife, whatever the case may be, that I will not be able to stop them even if, even if I have my full time and attention on you and able to shoot you in that time. 
you're still going to get to me and kill me. All right. So if you if you want a distance, 30 feet. <laughs> I mean, I the law's not going to say that. But if you want to get back 30 feet, you say, hey, look, I'm pretty far back, dude. You know, but you know if, if that will actually give them a little more space, as it were. But you know, no one's ever going. A judge is not going to ever going to tell you. You know, they're never going to say in case law or in real legislature that you must be back X number of feet from a police officer during an arrest or during his or her execution of their lawful duties. It's situational. Right. It'll always it be is situational. situational. You know, because if you're in a hospital, if you're in, you know, you know. Just or an open street elevator. All right, we're almost out of time, so I want to make sure that everybody repeats the words one more time. Yeah, we'll do. We'll, 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 I want to make sure it repeats, then we'll do questions if we still have time. So, first of all, you all heard it once. All together now, I do not consent to any searches. All together, I do not, not consent, consent to, to any searches. searches. Uh, second, just uh, I, the phrase is: Am I being detained or am I free to go? Here we go. Am I being detained or am I free to go? And the last one is bizarre that you actually have to say you're asserting your right to remain silent, but you actually have to say that you're going to shut up. You can't just shut up. You actually have to say it. I'm not kidding. That's the law. So all together, well, after me, I'm asserting my right to remain silent. I want to speak to my lawyer. I am asserting my right to remain silent. I want to speak with my lawyer. So uh, one thing I'd like to say that the video did approach and I would like to reassert to everyone, if you have officers approach your home, please always do remember to step outside your front door, shut your door behind you, and then ask them what they'd like to speak with you about. That is the best way to preserve your self-protection. And if your you're home. and if you're doing a play party, make sure that you know who's controlling the doors, and somebody is on the back door, because cops will come to the back door, and some idiot will let them in. And knowing is half the battle. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting issue. So in Georgia, Georgia is one of the states where you need to have ID, or police can arrest you if you don't. Uh, identify yourself it's not that you have to have your license you have to identify yourself and what they'll bust you on is loitering of all things if you uh if you don't identify yourself but it's not necessarily having your id though it's a good idea to have. it's a good idea to have so you show your age but if a cop asks you to identify or show your id you can often just identify yourself and that should cover the law now nah, asshole cop might be out there all right are we out of time or we have time for more questions Officer jones his VA card, and he's also sharpened the edges for combat. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Tell folks about this video. We have uh, stickers for the Democracy uh, Video Game Voters Organization. So thank you all for joining us. We can answer more questions.